sometimes I felt for Ted and with all the chaos going on in the world, it's, I would want to do the same thing and just isolate to nature. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, there's, there's actually a thing called nature deficit disorder. Have you heard of this? No. Yeah, it's a, it's a thing they're studying. Like, uh, I, I don't know too much about it, but it's, it's a, in, uh, something that psychologists are looking at of just what hum how humans behave if they don't have enough access to natural environments. Yeah, interesting. If you don't mind, Tony, let's, uh, let's talk about this. What made you want to bring this story again? I mean, this was a while ago and you were co-writer, director. I guess I was just really interested in uh, this character that lived off the grid that's had such an impact. You know, somebody lived with no running water or electricity and had this bombing campaign for 19 years and, you know, uh, you know, terrorized the nation, shut down airports, um, you know, and had, it was the biggest FBI manhunt. So, um, you know, and I had seen a bunch of stuff about him and always from the FBI perspective, and I thought it'd be super interesting to just place the film in his world, you know, play, see the story from his point of view um, and what that was like. Uh, so, you know, um, and the farther, you know, I dug into it, realizing all these nuances, you know, the fact that he you know, had an incredibly high IQ, um, you know, and then finally reading his manifesto and realizing, you know, he was right about a lot of stuff. Um, so, you know, as I dove in, it just became more, you know, fascinating and became more urgent to, to tell the story. So there is a lot of content out there. So how, for both, how did you break it down and dissect it? Uh, yes, I don't know. That is the hard part. Um, you know, it's, uh, we had so much material and we had you know, tens of thousands of pages of uh, his diaries and his writings from the archives. So, you know, we were just kind of gleaning the highlights and, you know, our you know, original rough cut of the movie was four hours long. So, you know, we were approaching it kind of this as this epic. Um, and then we're just kind of curating enough so it would be, you know, not too informational, you know, and, um, but, uh, you know, also wanted it to be experiential, you know. Um, so it, 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 was a, it was a difficult process, but um, you know, just trying to strike the right balance of who we really thought he was. And for you? Um, well, for me, it was really just to, to try and live as much of what I could access of him as possible and let Tony capture that. It was a very sort of documentary-like way that we shot and covered the film. So as Tony says, we shot an enormous range of stuff and you know, there were all kinds of things that, and in the end of the day, Tony had to decide what he did or didn't want to include and how much, you know, you humanize him as it were or don't. But for me, I was just, I just did as, we did as much as possible. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of stuff that, for example, his, just his loneliness, his, his desperate need to connect with women. We, there is some of that in the film, but that was a, that was a huge thing, I think, in, in his life. There, there was a very lonely man. Um, desperate for human connection, particularly with a with a female partner, um, and uh, just the 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 amount of things about him that I didn't know. You know that he that I mean the the one person in Montana who was close to him was the librarian. And when I said to her, "What what was your memory of Ted Kaczynski?" So we got to meet all these locals that that knew him, and some of them are in the movie. Frankly, well, a bunch of them are actually in the movie playing different roles. And she said, uh, his sense of humor. And what I remember most about Ted was laughing. He would just come to the library and we'd make jokes and he had this like very sort of dark satirical kind of humor. And we would just laugh and laugh and laugh. And it's like, that's her memory of Ted Kaczynski. And that's not something that obviously is out there in the public, you know, that, that <laughs> so there were all those things to include. Like, can you show him being funny? Can you show him being in love? Can you show him, you know, how much of, of, of him can we fit into the movie? Um, but fascinating stuff. He composed classical music. He could draw. Um, you know, he was a he was a very interesting character. And so I just lived as much of it as I could. And and then it's you know limited to what we can fit into the film. Well, thank you for bringing up the loneliness part because I was going to ask Tony about the cinematography. And 
I don't know, I think it was like around half the film where it's really portraying the loneliness and the way you directed the slow motion of objects around. Can you talk a little bit about that scene? You mean, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, the film goes in and out of reality and, and fantasy. And I think that was just sort of important for us to, you know, not have the film be overly realistic, you know, that it would be so dry, you know? And, you know, like Charlotte was saying, we just kind of went deep into who this guy is. We knew how he felt about women. We knew how he felt all these different ways. And just trying to, you know, tell it visually was so important, you know? Um, and, and, you know, I, I think sort of, you know, understanding him allowed us to kind of create these fantasy moments, you know, of maybe what he was going through and, and, and his loneliness. So, and then interpret that into, you know, without giving too much away in the film into some of the scenes you're talking about, you know? So um, yeah, it was just really a full on immersion from Charlto, just giving us everything full spectrum to also the crew, you know, we were just living a few minutes from his cabin, you know, walking around his land, camera crews in his old root cellars, you know, all building the structure together. You know, we're a very minimal crew. So just sort of the being in the physical landscape kind of dictated to us how we should shoot it, you know, and it became obvious. And we wanted to capture the land the way Ted saw it, you know, and that was really important. He like pretty much strips naked and it's like mm. showing vulnerability. Can you mm. talk about um, getting into that mindset? Well, he was, he was an extremely vulnerable person with regard to his level of honesty. When he writes his diaries, they are staggeringly self-aware and brutally exposing of himself. Um, and there's a power in that. There's a power in going into raw, raw, honesty about human nature. I mean, there's one thing that he refers to of like, as a man, and, and we didn't include this in the film, but it's like his level of loneliness that he would masturbate and he would imagine himself as a woman so that he could feel some sort of female energy. And he, he records that, you know, he explain he puts that down. Like when you, when you hear that, like as a man who's, who's been lucky enough to have female partners in my life if I imagine my life without a woman without that energy or that influence it, it's brutally painful so yeah it was just really getting into this the rawness of him he, he wasn't a tough guy he was a you know he was a, a, a he was I sort of call him a wilderness nerd on one hand you're talking about a guy with like a genius IQ um, but who also then learned how to be deadly with a gun and obviously make his own weapons um, so he was a very interesting character. He's not your typical redneck living in the woods stereotype. You know, he's a mathematician living in the woods. Um, so yeah, very interesting guy. A brilliant mind for sure. Yeah. Brilliant mind. Well, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you talking about the film. Thank you so much for your time. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank Thanks you. for having us.